contact at the compound. Number two. Yes, Look it at, is. We are live with this craziness from this weekend. Kevin Hale, Tiffany Mack, and our Bestie. special guest. <laughs> Bestie, Micah Hanks. Indeed. Very good to be here. Uh, they abducted me. I think it's very okay. fair to say that somehow I've survived here at the compound. And, and no doubt, probably thanks to all the fine folks who have been joining us here, a few of which I think the folks at home are going to meet tonight. So yes. got a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Let the probing uh, begin later for you. <laughs> yeah, not on camera, fortunately. You know, it's odd being in front of a, a camera, but not really have the video aspect of it. We're so you're not seeing. That. You guys cannot see like we can see ourselves normally on TV. Right. Me in the kind of the producer. I'm getting a bad echo. Um, I get to see what's going on. I see your pretty faces and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, flattery will get you everywhere. Yeah. You know that, Kevin. Yeah. I've heard that before, too. <laughs> Tiff <laughs> Tiffany, for the people out there that have been on this ride, um, this is Contact at the Compound 2. For those who haven't and are tuning in, what is Contact at the Compound? So this is sort of a, a my baby that was created last year out of total boredom and uh, the lockdown of 2020. We decided to get a small group of our closest friends in the community, and we were able to um, share just some good experiences that we've had throughout the years and um, why we are joined together in this circle of of mysteries and mysteries, but mysterious, uh, you know, the abnormalities, supernatural realms, um, cryptid entities. There's so many things that are, are, are around us every day. And so getting time to share that with, with our listeners, whether they're from the ghost aspect or, you know, everybody that likes UFOs like we do, Something like that. So now we've got um, some people with some special gifts coming in to share some of their experiences. And it's um, been about six months in the making. We were very excited about this. Um, and this is definitely a day of celebration. So It's been a few days of celebration. Things got started um, for some of us, like Friday, Wednesday night. Wednesday night, yeah. And then the 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 whole plan arrived Thursday, mm -hmm. and we kind of been at it for the last few days. Mm -hmm. So um, this is something that we we discussed. We knew we were going to do contact with the compound too. Right. We just didn't know to what level. And once you started talking about having, you know, sharing your ideas, I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's several le levels. You you just it's, it's elevated just, it to it, a degree. Yeah. But first and foremost, this is without, um, you know, coming across selfishly, this is a celebration of our show. Mm -hmm. And and then how are we going to do that? Well, as you said, invite some friends, uh, do it at the compound. Um, and we've had a great time. Yeah. Uh, so, and, you know, with me, I'm an enthusiast. I don't research. Well, I do a little for the show, but um, no, I geek, I'm geeking out. Micah Hanks is, you know, within arm's reach of me. Mm -hmm. We got a couple of our friends. We'll bring bringing them on soon that have just been here, and they <laughs> these they're beautiful people too. Just and, and yeah. I will say that when it when it comes to um, having face to face conversations, uh, being able to talk to people with similar mindsets and and interests and hopes and dreams of, of a spiritual realm that comes to fruition. People can people can get it, they really can get it when they're like-minded and, and sharing stories. And so this is about sharing and it's about releasing uh, a lot of trauma that we end up uh, carrying around with us. So we have some people here to discuss a little bit of that and how meditation and um, can sort of stimulate wholeness and uh, so we've got some really good conversations coming up. Um, and we are happy to 
co-host along with Mr. Hanks, the doctor. That voice. <laughs> time and space with this luscious voice. So we are really excited to have him on board with, with us at Universal Secrets. Contact at Compound. Two. Two little aliens. Yeah. Um, you know, let me give a shout out. Uh, we've got uh, our cast of characters, our, our friends watching uh, the show online. Uh, Bobby, Andy, Ronald, thank, thank you for streaming the audio portion of this on her radio show. The, the uh, video portion is on our YouTube, uh, Facebook, and the Twitter channels. Um, yeah, it's fun. This has been a fun few days. Um, I'm not sure if Maria Duff has uh, let anybody know where she is, but Miss sure. um, Duff is actually in <laughs> the room with us, and she's been helping us prepare this event, um, which is a, a pleasant surprise. Uh, so, and I wanted to give a shout out to my husband because um, he is the best chef on the planet, and he smoked the best butt you've ever had in your life. And, it wasn't, uh, and it wasn't mine. So, <laughs> so I'm on the up end. I, uh... Let's just say he has quite a gift. Uh, you know, I've watched this man in the kitchen. Uh, in fact, we were traveling around to uh, locations where Sasquatch sightings have been logged in recent years. Wow. And, I, and I'm looking at his, uh, I'm sorry, I think the visitors just arrived. They did. I'm looking at his, his app and everything. And I said, what is that? Is that logging our, our miles? And he says, no, man, he says, that's more, you know, that's the temperature inside the, the smoker right now. I'm like, I'm cooking while we're driving. I'm like, no, that's a man who can multitask. That, that, right, that, talent. that is a Renaissance man. And right it's there. technology. And yeah. uh, he, he has a brain for both. So. Yeah. Not only is he a handsome beast. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> you guys are going to really enjoy his shirt and, tonight. And we're going to so. have some great conversation with yeah. him and all the fine guests. And I just yeah. got to say, you know, as you mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of people bringing special gifts. Mm -hmm. I just hope it's bourbon since we're in Kentucky. Well, yeah. we do have bourbon. <laughs> <Right>? So afterwards, <laughs> we will have some drinks. Otherwise, my chest will look as red as my lips. That's Which right. is always nice. Yes, indeed. Yes. You know, I also have to add, mm -hmm. uh, last time I was on with the two of you, of course, you know, I was in my own respective bunker in Asheville, North Carolina. What a pleasure after the weird last couple of years that we've had to be right here in person, in studio yes. with the two of you. Tiffany, you and I have had some rather crazy adventures together over the years. Kevin, you know, I've, I've dreamt of the day when we'd finally sit down together, my man. and This officially... The start of many. The start of many, indeed. So we've got a lot to discuss. And, you know, of course, uh, these are unusual times. I mean, in the last couple of years, what have we seen? We have seen official acknowledgement of unidentified flying objects in the Thank skies the Lord. by our government. Uh, this has actually occurred on multiple different levels, many different times. Uh, and uh, to, to a mixed and varied response, people who have said, oh my gosh, you know, I knew it all along. Others who have said, well, is that the best video that you've got? I want to see better video. But then I think that there's this, you know, group of people, core people, many listeners, of course, of this program who would say, you know, this is really going to be evidence of a, of a change, I think, that we'll look back on and recognize one day. The moment, really, when a lot of people's minds began to change, a lot of people's attitudes began to shift, uh, you know, and maybe people's awareness of the world around them and what exists in it began to change a little. So anyway, I feel like that's all kind of encapsulated in what we're doing here this yes. evening. Great to be here. Absolutely. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So um, I would love to introduce you to our first two guests. Um, we, we have had a few days of um, romping around in the woods and uh, getting muddy and feeling and uh, hugging trees. And yes, we did pet the magic tree. Um, and, and I, I say that because it is just such a pleasure, um, feeling the soft moss that is just so full of life and energy and it's just still beautiful right now. You wouldn't think that at, in the beginning of October that we would have just lush, lush moss, but everything's so green. And so, um, I'm glad to be able to share that and, um, connect with nature over the past few days and get out there and um, 
investigate. We actually did a few little little things that were entertaining. So we're going to talk about that with our guests. Terry Lovelace, may, would you come up here, please? Join us. Yeah. How about a round of applause for Terry yeah, Lovelace? Can we all <laughs> just sit in here? We should, we should mention we have a live studio audience. We do. Please, she'll turn my head. Yes, indeed. Sierra. <laughs> Great to have you here, by the way, Terry. Yes. Thank you. And welcome. Come on indeed. up, Sierra. <laughs> also, Yay. Sierra Neblina. Lovely, Sierra. <laughs> this one yeah. needs to be over. Okay, hold on one second. Towards Sierra a little bit. Let me help you frame this, okay? A little bit. Uh -huh. that, right. Back just a little. So slightly? Right, right there. Perfect. Right there. Perfect. Okay. Live right. television, ladies and gents. Yes. That's always the fun part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so our, our, these two amazing human beings uh, came into our life when we started doing Universal Secrets, um, which, you know, has been about a year and a half in the making. And uh, we were we were lucky to catch Sierra on a show that a documentary called Extraordinary The Seating, which I was also contacted to be a part of. And at the time I was going through a divorce, so I wouldn't risk any uh, craziness um, for that, but you did a fantastic job in it. And I love um, how brave you are when it comes to giving information, um, not only about your uh, relationship with the government, the military, um, and this world of uh, visitations from Extra be extraterrestrial beings and people of all different kinds, uh, including uh, maybe even some Bigfoot. So uh, welcome, and we are going to talk of, about that. And Um, but you've you've had some experiences where you were on the craft, but you already but you also saw it from the earth, correct? I do. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, your camping trip, and not necessarily about the trip itself, like getting into the nitty gritty about the craft. Let's talk about the shape first of all. Yeah. Um to be clear, this was uh, in June of 1977 while I was on active duty in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And a friend and I both went to Devil's Den State Park in the northwest corner of Arkansas. And we can see the campground. We, uh, it was, curiously, it was the first time I'd ever been camping in my life. For my friend, it was the first time he'd been camping in his life. So we wanted to be real outdoorsmen. You know, looking back at this, it's just whole the whole trip was just kind of a strange adventure, but uh, we drove six and a half hours south from Whiteman Air Force Base to, to get into the park. And we uh, trespassed into this restricted area. It actually wasn't even in Devil's Den State Park. It's a piece of a federally owned land. And set up camp there. And uh, toward the evening, we saw some crazy lights on the uh, sky, on the horizon to the west. And we were in a remote area. I mean, there was nothing around us. And these... Three lights uh, formed a perfect little triangle on the horizon. And we saw them rotate at first, like about 120 degrees, and it aligned the base of the triangle parallel to the horizon. And then they started to move up. And the craft itself was triangular shape. 
but it was it was deep. It was like five stories deep, and it um, was the size of a Walmart. I mean, it was huge, and I don't know. So how a couple this, of acres. Acres. Probably, yeah. I, I would have trouble with that because I don't know how big an acre is. But oh. uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we have a pretty good idea with the Walmart. I mean, this thing was yeah, massive. Yeah, Walmart. Picture Walmart. I mean, yeah. building Not counting size. the parking lot. But yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. And, uh, you know, it was crazy because we weren't freaked out. We weren't afraid. We were calm. We were semi sedated. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just went to bed. And that's when they, that's when they took us. Do me a favor, Micah, turn the cane on mm -hmm. in the back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. up, 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 up. Talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. We are. This is live. We're kind of playing with Tweaking the sound. Tweaking as we go. Uh, yeah. So keep keep me posted in the chat how the, the sound's coming. Uh, so okay. the 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 question about the shape of the ship. This is this is um, interesting to me because a lot of times over the past five years or since 2017, we've talked about the tic tac shape of this this craft that's been discussed, and it's. It's interesting to see what types of crafts are out there. A lot of times they're not just a disc. And, and the military craft around that time frame in 1977, were you aware of any type of craft that were in that shape? Absolutely not. I mean, I was active duty Air Force. I was familiar with aircraft. And uh, mm -hmm. this was like nothing I'd ever seen before or since. Really? Okay. Yeah. And it was absolutely quiet, absolutely silent. And uh, it was just an insane night. I visited you, my nightmares uh, this thing. Did yeah. I want I'm sorry. Did you, did you get any kind of feeling um, while you were camping? Did you get any kind of feeling beforehand that there was going to be something odd that happens? Yeah, that's, that's a great question because we, we did. And we were... We had a campfire between us. We were sitting on air mattresses on either side of the campfire. And I know this sounds cliche, but I, I say it because it's true. And that is that things fell silent. The, the crickets. crickets, the tree frogs, all the stuff in the forest. And like I said, I, I'm not familiar with, I'm not much of an outdoorsman, mm -hmm. but all that stuff went dead quiet. And not only did that go quiet, but we'd enjoyed a nice breeze. And that, that stopped too. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it unnerved me. And I asked my friend, of course, like, he's going to know. And I'm like, you know, Toby, man, is this normal? And he's like, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, we've been laughing and cutting up the bug. Don't worry about the bugs. They'll come back. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't come back. Mm -hmm. And that was a clue that something was not right. I mean, mm -hmm. had I been there by myself, I'd have been gone. It just spooked you. It was just too It strong. spooked me. Yeah. It sure did. Yeah. Okay. But then just a short while later, we were... We were all chill. We were just semi-sedated. Interesting. For the record, Terry, did your outdoor quota get caught up in the, this year, in these last few days? Are you like... Yeah, I think so. I think I've made up for a lot of lost time. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, there's a little funny story behind um, where Terry was supposed to stay and where Terry actually stayed. Um, we had told him that he was going to be sleeping in the camper. Um, but I opened it up and it smelled like 1989 in there. So we didn't feel like putting Terry in the 1989 scented camper. <laughs> <That'd been okay. laughs> so now Terry is staying in the dead bedroom, which we've talked about on the show before. Um, but he said he's had very, very nice, peaceful night's sleep. So I that's have. a good thing. Yeah. Well, it's probably though because you've been hiking him, you know, to near exhaustion every single day, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know because I was there too. I'm still a little sore, by the way. Yes. You know, gosh. Yeah, you yeah, guys absolutely. like to hike. We do. We enjoy it. Um, so you know, all all laughing aside, you know, I I did find uh, it sort of humorous to name his room. Devil's Den. Um, so I've got a picture of that for, for you guys that we can post up later. Um, but Terry has uh, endured my uh, childish humor. And uh, I think we're, we're doing good. So, you know, this has just been a real privilege to be here. And I want to say mm -hmm. thanks to you. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Brent. Uh, you Thank guys you. are a marvelous host, yeah. and it's just a real privilege to be here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so let's talk uh, just momentarily. Um, Michael, did you have any other no. questions? Okay. 
I wanted to talk about your experience here. So we walked um, down to the magic tree and we got some interesting um, readings when we went down to discuss uh, using the, the ghost box. Yeah, I have a, an app on my phone, uh, Necrophonics. It's a great app, 10 bucks, uh, and it does some amazing things. Mm -hmm. And we went and uh, visited the, uh, the tree. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's amazing, this tree, uh, Brent told me that he had an arbiter, a uh, mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. knows trees. Mm -hmm. This tree is like 600 years old. Yeah, five to 600 year old bur oak tree. And uh, it, it, everybody that goes there gets some sense of um, spiritual power, whether it's um, a lot of beings surrounding the area, um, or if there's just this, nurturing energy i'm not sure there is a vibe to the tree i mean i put my mm -hmm. hand against it and we had the the ghost box and mm -hmm. we we're getting some pretty interesting responses on the ghost box yeah yeah we have it recorded too um so we'll be able to load that up you know what was your favorite what was your favorite response that we heard because we did ask um a few we questions heard real clear who is she yes we heard the, yeah. those three words who crystal clarity yeah. What was that in response to? Uh, it, it was kind of just a general query of, you know, okay. who's there? Anybody yeah. want to talk to us? Uh, yeah. uh, but it was a little girl's voice. Yeah, it sounded like Or that. a young woman, yeah. but it was crystal clear. And we've heard a lot of little girl voices and giggling on the property. So um, I'm, I was just very uh, curious to see how anybody else uh, felt on the property. So I'll be asking them as they come up. It's magic. Um, to, it was magic. You do yeah. feel like it was oh, magic. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, does does the idea of uh, camping does that bother you at all? Would that be something um, that would give you? Um, do you? Has it been ruined completely for you? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think you'll find me camping anytime soon. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think I'd have been fine to spend the night in a camper in your driveway. <laughs> I don't think that would have been a lot of anxiety. Um, but you know, I, I uh, the outdoors are just not for me. You yeah, know? And it's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. But I've really enjoyed nature here in the forest, and uh, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We love it. Well, no doubt helped by the company, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> Speaking of, by the way, of course, one of our other fantastic guests here mm -hmm. uh, has shared in many of these experiences. And, you know, of course, I think for the rest of us, uh, with that height, which, of course, equates to those very lengthy legs, <laughs> yes. I've tried to keep up. <laughs> I certainly have, and uh, it's it's obvious you're very physically active, yes. you know, Sierra, and and we've hiked all yeah, weekends. That's right, because <laughs> I've tried to keep up. You know, <laughs> you know no, we've had a great time. It's been fun. It's been fun. You know, Sierra is um, a very empathic person and a very has has a really strong sense of of psychic gifts. Um, when she first got in on Wednesday night, uh, we, we just sort of sat out on the patio and unwind after, after a long trip uh, from Colorado to here. And we, I, I have not spoken to her about any of the, the energies that we have on the property here. Um, I just knew that uh, we would have a heightened sense of energy having these types of, of minds with us and beings with us. Um, so when she first arrived, we wanted to discuss um, what happened here, because I think it's the most current and most important, um, is that we've had stories with Brent, and I'll let him share one later. But Sierra, when you came in here, we sat down. And what did you end up getting on the patio? So I came in, we came in and we sat down. <clears throat> it was just you and I in the house at the time. Mm -hmm. You just give me a great tour of this beautiful home. Thank you so much. Love it. Thank you. And again, thank you so much. Your hospitality and brand. And I've just eaten so much food. I <laughs> have to like charge me an extra baggage to get on the plane. <laughs> but we came in, we sat down, and um, I love tobacco of all forms. You know, 
grew up smoking pipe tobacco and cigars and stuff. And I mentioned this to my gracious host and she was like, do you hookah? And I'm like, do I hookah? <laughs> so, I invented the hookah. She's a professional. <laughs> so uh, we sat down and you had gotten up to go inside for just a quick second. We weren't out there, but 15 minutes. And you know how you're like, you have a distinct feeling that you're not alone anymore. Mm -hmm. And like, we're just sitting there. And then, so we're sitting there and we're just getting the hookah going. And I look back over the footage. So I kind of like, I saw it from a different angle, which is some, it was kind of cool actually. And I just, my, my back went straight and yeah. I looked at her and I said, we're not alone anymore. And she's like, what's going on? Where's it coming from? And I kind of just did a quick 360 scan around me and it was coming from right here. Which so I, was the uh, direction of the path that goes down to the magic tree. Okay. And, and she came in in the middle of the night, so there was no way for her to judge where uh, a trail would be. Yeah. So um, this is all psychic intuition that she's, she's gathering. Yeah. And I was so, like, hmm, I'm just going to feel for a second. And then it shifted from not feeling alone to feeling observed. Mm -hmm. And because there's all these different types of experiences that I've had being in the presence of different things. And it was a, a very, very palpable sense of being observed. And then that to me kicks me into, you know, so I just turned around and I looked and about 10 feet up off the ground, flat, and then about seven feet off the ground, two eye shines, almost at the same time, eye shine. Two sets of eye shine. Two eyeshine. sets of eye shine, but they were like a white. White instead of red. Yeah, like a quick white. Mm -hmm. and, and I was kind of judging where the ground was. So the next day I did, I did look, and I was like, yeah, that was it's pretty far off the ground. So, and then I just told her what I, what I saw. And she's like, hang on, I'm going to get... <laughs> so then there was also a point where um, Sierra said she started seeing little explosions of light, mm. almost like fireflies, <clears throat> but um, a little bit smaller, brighter white rather than a focus yellow. focus in because it was really, really dark. Like with all of that stuff, so I'm from Colorado, high altitude, dry. And when there's like fog and like all this water in the air, how do you breathe? <laughs> it's humid yeah. here. It's very humid. It takes a lot of practice, let me tell you. So it makes the dark darker. Does that make any sense? It's almost like it's the darkness you're seeing into. So I was like, now wait a minute. You know, I know I've been flying for a minute. So I took my glasses off and I'm like looking and I started focusing. And then I started looking with all my eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's like pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 all about 10, 15 feet off the ground. Which is similar to, a, you know, firefly display at night. But this is uh, about, well, I don't know, at least a month past firefly season. So we haven't had any. No, it's um, bright white, too, instead of bright, like a well, the yellow kind of glow yeah. that they do. Mm -hmm. and it was a lot faster, like almost like a pin of light that poof, poof, poof. Not something that's going light, light. You know what I mean? It's like, boof, 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 boof. And I've seen them before. I've actually mm -hmm. seen them traveling in England. And I call them like the sprites. You know what I mean? Like these energy things. And then we we started talking again. And she's like, what else do you sense? And then I had the strongest feeling to stand up and walk in that same direction and go stand in another part of the porch and tune in. And when I did, I heard... I said, do you have a neighbor over here? And she goes, certainly not one that would be up this late at night. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on a Wednesday night. And I said, yeah. a man and a woman, they're talking over here. Are you sure? She's like, yeah, no. And then she, so she started hearing those voices, like a conversation. Mm -hmm. And then I heard another voice over here. So I don't know if we were hearing two different conversations or she was hearing both sides of the conversation and I was only hearing one side. Mm -hmm. So, So that was... It's, it's pretty incredible to have um, this type of auditory interaction and having someone confirm that I'm not crazy. Do you know how nice that is? We talk about stigma and we talk about how people can persecute you for even the most basic things in life. Um, and, and it doesn't matter what color you are. It has nothing to do with that. There are so many different types of people. Truly. 
And then we were sitting there and then amazing. And then you're like, what else do you feel like through the yard? And then I just sort of went from that direction and I scanned and I just sort of looked and I'm like, what is all of this <laughs> going back and forth? It's almost like a, a road of just activity. And I could just feel layering upon layering of history, different things and different energies moving back and forth and back. I mean, it's just a literal highway. It is the highway and it's the Oldham County, the old Oldham County road. So and she told me that I was like, oh, well, and it's right beside the magic tree. <laughs> yeah. And we still have the, the, the ruts from the carriages and the horses. And uh, we occasionally find horseshoes and things like that. So um, feeling that energy uh, and a couple hundred years worth of energy to be, you know, precise. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. I was like, I was tuned in. It was like the more I tuned in, the more, the more loud it got, and the more mm -hmm. that I could feel, I could feel from like settlers to farmers to natives to not only that, but I'm almost since I've slept here a couple mm -hmm. of nights, I think there's a ley line that runs back there somewhere too. Mm -hmm. An energetic ley line that could be actually amplifying some of this energy, like holding and amplifying some of these things that have happened that and, and underwater caverns and, and waterways actually helps and mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. flowing water yeah. on the property i think is supposed yeah. to help absolutely yes. it's cool to have the uh, fossilized seabed yeah back there and the, the fossils michael you could speak to that yeah, yeah. well i uh, there are certainly a lot of fossils in this property and I got up a little earlier this morning and didn't want to wake Sierra up. Otherwise, oh, she. I told her to come get me. Otherwise, I'm going to say she would have been right there because, yeah, uh, after our first trip down, we all went down together. And Sierra said, If you want to go back, man, I'll go with you. <laughs> so we were excited to get back down there. But uh, this morning, before everybody got up, you know, I snuck out. Like and it was a beautiful morning. It was. It was about 59 degrees. And, you know, I walked down. Again, you know, there are uh, obviously remnants um, of the ancient seabed that you see here, mm -hmm. um, you are seeing everything from corals, I mean, again, these magnificent blossoming green corals mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Tiffany had talked about for months before we got here. Um, and of and course, the horned corals, the horned, they, yeah. like dinosaur teeth. It's they amazing. do, they look like great big dragons. Mm -hmm. they? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, there's so much of that down there. And so, you know, you get a lot of the old along with the new and some of it juxtaposed against one another, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of makes for a very interesting vibe, I think, in a place like this. A lot of energy, a lot yeah. of history. Yeah. What else did you find? You actually found um, possible, let's just say human remains, <laughs> because that makes it more interesting. Or, wait, 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 wait. Let's just say human let's just remains. Say, oh, what, what let's are we just doing say here? they may have been human no. remains. No, I, I can tell you that there was a deer bone. It was a deer bone. Yeah, there was an obvious deer bone. And, uh, you know, also uh, some, some of the lovely little uh, crustaceans that mm -hmm. have been, you know. I, in fact, I was recently traveling in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was going through all of these beautiful rivers in the Chapada dos Fiaderos, I was trying to see if they had crustaceans. They are like the crayfish that we know in North America. And I mean, I, we I call them crawl daddies. Crawl daddies, yeah. You call them crawl daddies oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I call okay. them, yeah, whatever you want, you know. <laughs> but uh, those little mud mountain, bugs. little mountains, yeah, mud bugs, little mountain lobsters, whatever. But um, and, I, and after hiking for days, uh, you know, into waterfalls and you know these beautiful rivers in Brazil, I, I found lots of fish, you know, crayfish. But after two minutes in Curry's Creek, there was <laughs> there were crayfish all over the place. Yeah. I almost reached down and just grabbed one and picked it up. Uh, one thing I have. Why wouldn't you? Well, I just didn't get him quick enough. I was going to oh, try and scare oh, you. know, always like to scare slow. Tiffany, you know. I, I She's hard that. to scare them. I don't do that to my kids. I pick them <laughs> up and chase them around. So I don't know why you actually you full assumed that I would be scared of them. No, actually, already? full disclosure, I told her I was going to try and grab one. And she says, make sure you get him back behind, you know, the tail. Go behind and him. Go behind him, yes. Yeah, so the little pinchers can't get you, you know. <laughs> so, by the way, no crayfish were harmed in the filming no. of this program. <laughs> and so no we humans. We want to be clear about that, yeah. yes. Um, unfortunately, a deer may have you know, succumbed to natural, you know, death. Selection. But, yeah, that's right. And, and lots and lots and lots of millions of year old uh, clams and uh, other kinds of bivalves that are now preserved beautifully in those fossil beds out there. But indeed, I mean, it's a very rich area, paleontologically, I'm sure archaeologically. I mean, I, we haven't seen evidence of that here on the property, but... We uh, actually, the... There was a gentleman who lives at the end of the street on a, at the edge of our drive who has found um, Native American uh, tools 
like hammers and, mm -hmm. and things like that from the, the stone yeah stone age or at yeah. least the stone age on our property well, i mean it's not surprising and again yeah. you know you look and we were talking about this earlier you know when i was down there on, on the island in the uh, creek um your your husband and terry were dispatched to rescue me because i you know apparently had gone missing 411 for hours and they were uh -huh. like where's mike you know? uh -huh. and so so here i hear this, this motor and terry and uh, brent show up you know in a, in a four wheeler to uh, retrieve me and i get a text message simultaneously from tiffany saying it's breakfast time but you know uh, i told you guys you know i said over here on this land as we're coming out, we're seeing white-tailed deer just leaping across the trail. It's beautiful, yes. majestic. I mean, there's so many deer on this property. Yes. Uh, and, and I said, guys, you know, again, how that looks right now with the forest and the deer, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 years ago, it would have like, looked like that. And the indigenous Americans who were here then absolutely mm -hmm. would have, you know. Seen uh, the same thing. They would have seen the same thing. It would have been very similar. And, of course, you know, evidence of their presence here, no doubt, has been found. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me chime in real quick. Um, Terry, earlier today, uh, you had the opportunity to spend uh, some time with um, one of our guests on, the, um, on an upcoming segment here soon. Uh, regression, you did a little bit of regression there? I, I did. Rebecca was kind enough to help me out with that. I've never been regressed with the exception of 1977, courtesy of the United States Air Force uh, Office of Special Investigations was my, my last uh, uh, hypnotic regression. Uh, and this was a lot more pleasant. Uh, I had one incident, uh, I'll, be, I'll be brief, from uh, April 16th of 2019. I, uh, I sleep with an iPhone in a t-shirt pocket. And um, I had a reading on my iPhone the following morning from 5.24 a.m. that I climbed six flights of stairs. And I didn't get out of bed until 5.55. So we went and we focused on that particular day. And uh, it was really fascinating because I could see this play out in my mind's eye. I mean, it wasn't a clear linear memory of anything, but it was more like little sequences of stuff that happened. And uh, I recall going through the morning air at 5.23 a.m. It was still dark outside. I could see stars and a bull over my head was a... a yeah. Was that a triangle crack? No, it, it was, was a, a saucer. Okay. Very similar to one that I have on my phone, gotcha. took a picture of it, mm -hmm. and uh, the underneath was black. And I went up into this thing, into the darkness. And uh, that was, that was, that was kind of, uh, God, yeah. It made me kind of anxious, like, yeah. So, <laughs> um, well, Rebecca was very kind and, and uh, brought me through that. So it was kind of eye-opening to me. Okay, good. It validates that, uh, that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And the wonderful, the thing that I like, I like about um, Rebecca's work is that everything is really comfortable, calming. It's peaceful. It's not something traumatic, and um, it's not something that she uses as a tool to manipulate someone's mind. This is all questions that you're asking yourself, and um, she walks you through it, which is amazing. So I'm glad you had that opportunity. Yeah, and, very grateful. Um, and it's it's been wonderful to to have you all here. Um, is there anything that you wanted to share about your I, I, before we let you go? I know that you want to go out and, and sit by the fire and have a drink, but is there anything that you um, wanted to share about the my lab situation? Because I know that you've you've not talked a whole lot about that. I haven't because it's been an, un, an unraveling sort of situation. I had a basically memory suppression of around a five-year-old time. And some of you that have been following me through social media over the last you know several years know that I kind of hit a rough spot in my life, ended up being homeless and kind of couch surfing for a little while. And it kind of brought on some... PTSD and stress. And in the mm -hmm. middle of all of that, the above majestic uh, documentary came out. And I just happened to be watching that one day in 2019. 
and I caught a picture on there and I froze it and I rewound it, rewound it. Well, the picture in there of a child being strapped to the bed and a car being, you know, held down was me. And I was like, <gasps> it's like, okay, maybe I'm just, so I sent it to my mom and she's like, what are you doing? Strapped to a bed. She was very upset. Oh. And, um, what is, what it's done is it created this stress in my life to be quite honest with you because i thought that i i've got a lot of strange high strangeness that have happened in my life i think that there's some secret space program stuff running through there you know the hybridization program for sure mm -hmm. other different things with regard to astral projection and so on but i had all of these memories come back in one thing that happened listening to corey good speak one day in 2013 and then it's like I suppress them again because I've been working on my autobiography, trying to get it all put together in some way, packaged up and put out. Um, but it just it caused me to just put it on the back burner. And then I've been working with uh, I'm a veteran, uh, a Gulf War veteran. And thank I, you both for your service. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank, you both. You. thank you. Thank you. And I started working with the Veterans Center, some counseling and PTSD and different things like that. And she goes, there's something that happened to you around five years old. And it, I'd started having the last three or four years. It started to really physically impact my life. I started having panic attacks. Like I didn't even know what a panic attack until it happened one day. It was just terrible. Like they came and got me and put me that and then the ambulance to the hospital. It was bad. Yeah. Started having, I couldn't panic attacks when I would sleep. I would wake up constantly and then they came sleep deprived. And it was all, it's all of these memories still trying to come out. So I am still in the process. And for the first time in my life, I'm 51, I am willing to sit and go through regression. And this winter, I'm going to still spend a great deal of time sitting and processing all of this mm -hmm. and putting it in some sort of packageable type of a thing and getting it out there because I feel like people need to know at the very minimum about what was going on and maybe there's something that my story after going through regression can provide something for mm -hmm. somebody else. And yeah. that's, you know, the reason why I do that. You know, I, I agree with you, Terry, do you feel like sharing your story is um, meant for other people to know that they're not uh, losing their mind and that there is a real uh, problem that we're facing? Yeah. You know, I, the whole purpose, the the reason I wrote the book, well, it was twofold. It was it was therapeutic on mm -hmm. one hand, right? Um, but on the other, I I was quiet about this. I didn't speak about it for so many years because it would have affected my employment. So, right. Right. Um, but I want people to know the stuff is real. Mm -hmm. And if if you hear somebody tell you that they saw something, don't be too quick to judge. Uh, give it some reflection and uh, know that this stuff is real. Yeah, yeah. You you still have implants? I, I do. I had two sets. Uh, they're on my web page, uh, terrylovelace.com. Uh, there are two sets of x-rays, one from above my knee, where there's a square structure about the size of a fingernail with two wires attached to it. Uh, that was the one above my knee, and then below my knee was a collection, or is a collection, of... Uh, the radiologist said it was bone tissue, but he also said that he'd never seen bone tissue spontaneously sprout in the middle of a muscle, much less arrange themselves in this symmetrical pattern. Right. So that 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 anomaly is still there below my knee. The one above my knee uh, was extracted by ET on November 17th of 2017. Uh, and I have the x-rays from the day the next day, showing that the thing had been removed from my leg. And then I had terrible wounds on my leg, bruising from where it was removed, so. Did your doctors comment on having obviously seen in the original set of x-rays, multiple objects, and then this one? Well, yeah, because I, what I wanted to do was have them removed. I right. mean, the, my first thought was I want this thing out of my body. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it's doing to you. Yeah, I have no idea. And it was mm -hmm. a complete shock. But, you know, whatever it was, I knew it related to 1977 in some way or shape or form. Mm -hmm. So I went, I saw a surgeon. I get all my medical care at the VA. And uh, I said, I, can you get, take these out for me? And he had my x-rays right there on his laptop. He a young guy. He's like, oh, these are cool. Yeah, we can, we can do this for you. We can take these out. He said, but you need a cardiac clearance letter because you've had some heart issues. Uh -huh. So 
I went and I saw my VA cardiologist and she says, no, I'm not going to get a clearance letter for that. And I was outraged. And she says, well, no, no, no. This is a risk versus benefit analysis. These things have been in your legs since 1977 and they haven't done you any harm. And she says, look, I got a thousand vets out here with metal in their leg from Korea to Afghanistan. They want it out too. But the standard of care in this country is that unless it's causing you a problem, we let it lie. Hmm. So I, I could not get a surgeon to remove them for me without absent a cardiac clearance letter. I had thought about doing that in Mexico. I bet you Dr. Roger Lear would have been able to. Oh, Roger Lear would have done that. that. Unfortunately, he died in 2014. Yeah, he passed away before you, okay, before you were discussing it. Hmm. It's, it's amazing to see um, the implants that were in your body. And I think Kevin pulled them up. Them up. Okay. Um, and, and how they changed throughout the years. Um, you go from the strange little floral pattern to the little square shape, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. What do you think happened with that? I don't know. Uh, you know, there's a uh, Steve Colburn. There, there's a, a guy that worked with Dr. Roger Lear named Stephen, uh, I believe it's Colburn. I met him at uh, AlienCon in San Francisco in February, 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has all this equipment that will isolate the uh, implants, find them in people. Mm -hmm. So I went to see him, I didn't tell him who I was. He didn't come to my presentation. I don't think he knew who I was. I wasn't wearing my badge as a presenter. And uh, he ran some like a Geiger counter and some instruments over my leg. And without being told, he went right to my right calf and said, there's something in your right calf muscle. And whatever it is, it's highly magnetic. Hmm. And I'm like, how can, how can it be magnetic? He says, they can magnetize a piece of wood if they want to. They. They. <laughs> they. Yeah. Interesting. Now, uh, <laughs> have you ever had experience with implants? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think I have in my teeth, in my nasal cavity, at the very minimum. Um, and I, when you said something about somebody who has equipment to scan the body, I was like, wow, I would really like to do that. That would be awesome. <laughs> and just yeah. see what we find. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've got to ask the proverbial question. When you go through an airport, is it not going off? It's not looking for something like that. You I don't know, allow them to scan me in that way. I just, I get a pat down. I mean, when you just walk through the, the, the scan, does it, it not detect? It does detect something. Okay. Uh, but it's not in my calf muscle. It's not in my abdomen. Mm -mm. It's in my pelvic area. Oh. And they're not going to go there anyway. Right. No, they, they do the back of the hand thing. And yeah. that's the only way to get through the airport. But every time I go through, uh, they find that. Mm -hmm. no. No. All right. yeah. Okay, I think we are going to take a five minute break in order to get everybody resituated. Um, thank you, Sierra and Abelina, thank Terry you. Lovelace. <laughs> We're going to let right. them go and, and have a little bit of fun by the campfire. So. Indeed. Great. Thank you. Thanks yes. so much. Right. And of course, as always, there's much more on the next side of this. So you guys at home, stay put. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Kevin Hale, Tiffany Mack, and of course, your Thanks. guest, the mouth from further south, Micah Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right here on Universal Secrets. Contact at the compound, too. Break time. We'll be back. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Oh, Lord. We are back live with our friends on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, that's the video portion, the audio portion on Earth Radio Shows. First segment wrapped up with Harry Lovelace, Sierra and Melina. Uh, who are the cool kids with us right here? We have Jamin Olivencia. What's up, guys? <laughs> and we? we have discussed uh, different types of consciousness and um, spirituality uh, with Jamin before, uh, along with some of his uh, spiritual visitations. So um, I'm sure that we're going to have some good conversation tonight. Absolutely. Let's go all the way. All right. And then we've got Rebecca Gerasitano, who is our local guru. Uh, she is just an amazing therapist. Uh, she does past life regressions. She does a lot of um, quantum healings. Uh, Reiki to us. Is, is, is Reiki part of your repertoire? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Energy clearing. Yeah. Hypnosis, past life regression. But and the you, real question is, Rebecca, have you ever uh, wrestled in a wrestling ring like our man Jane? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about past life regression right there. <laughs> That's what's that. Indeed. Spiritual wrestling and real wrestling. You know, as, as we're getting started, I must mm -hmm. ask I noticed you came in with a bottle of mineral water, my friend. I so, have. Yes, indeed. And you can tell I'm fancy, couldn't you? Yes, I could. Uh, I guess You're fancy while with we're your... here, we'll do a little. Shout out. Yes, indeed. <laughs> to Pellegrino. Yes. Thank you. We, we thought we would water. get a glass of water, but then we realized we were both mineral water aficionados <laughs> and we could just have mineral water together. It was incredible. <laughs> the ultimate spirit. Yes, indeed. Yeah. My, my cup's right there. I just can't reach it, but you know. I was going to put your name on it because we were both sharing. <laughs> yeah, I know the red cup. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was looking for a sharpie. I, so I got a sharpie in the back. Find it. Yeah. yeah, right. Here, you hold yours. Sharpie, please. You hold yours, and Tiffany, if you'll keep your eye on mine at all times. They're upstairs. Can... I did provide a sharpie for Our, okay. for that. Very yes. well, Maria. Maria, <laughs> <laughs> the sharpie, please. <laughs> so, but anyway, all discussion of bubbles and water aside, you know. <laughs> In, in a lot of ways, the work that the two of you do is not unalike. One might call it at times spiritual wrestling, uh, as indicated by some of the stories we heard earlier. Fortunately, it's not always like that. You have a background, of course, with actual wrestling, Jamin, which has brought you into the spiritual kind of area yeah. of working. Let's let's start there for you about your journey, and then we'll get into your work, Rebecca. So, yeah, the journey for me, well, it started since childhood, but, you know, uh, from a spiritual standpoint, when I was four years old, I had a vision. I watched pro wrestling on TV and I, I, I had a vision of me doing it. Mm -hmm. I saw myself actually in a ring performing, even the way my body had turned out physically after you know working out and eating and, and doing the thing. The way I saw it as a child is quite literally the way it ended up turning out. And uh, I, I, I don't think I, I think after I got out of wrestling, I, I started to truly see the 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 serendipity in it all mm -hmm. and how it was made for me and 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 going even my out of body explorations that I've had like I didn't when I was younger I didn't look at it a particular way now as an adult I see all of the pieces in place and and how wrestling was actually a tool for me to come out of my shell wrestling was a tool for me to 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 bring out a confidence that I I didn't have prior to before that or when I was experiencing out of body explorations as a child, I was uh, totally in fear. I didn't know what the hell they were, uh, and and yeah, so it, I guess it just kind of brought this this aspect out of me that where now I can sit here and even have the courage to discuss it, and it's been fucking awesome. Like it's <laughs> been, I gotta admit, it has just been awesome. Yeah. So absolutely, yeah. Well, it's fascinating how you described to me earlier. Yeah what you would have perceived as dreams yes. when you were younger, which you would classify a little differently now. How would you describe that uh, realization of them being something different and what they actually represent? Yeah, so I, I believe the mind is, uh, through, through out-of-body exploration, we'll say out-of-body experiences, astral projection, whatever the fun word you want to use to describe it, I, I felt like, um, I feel like dreams uh, always have meaning to it and, we as is, is, is a society in general, I think chalk it off. 
I think we say, oh, it's just a dream, ha ha ha. Or even, even if you if you take imagination, for instance, I think imagination is like no different than a dream. And and the mind is a fucking powerful thing. Yeah. And yeah, so um, people people can chalk off it as a dream, and you may only experience that level of consciousness with the definition that you place on it, saying it's just a dream. But Which as means we were you don't explore it any further, you just sort of write it off. Yeah, yeah. And 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 me and Michael were discussing earlier. It's like, yeah, but if you say, hey, like I had an out-of-body experience or I was astral projecting, I believe you're actually setting your mind up to go deeper into those realms. Cause you gotta have an enthusiasm behind your dreams in order to see to see more, I think. From at least for me. Uh, and, and out of body exploration was always a very natural occurrence for me. So I know there are a ton of people out there who, who, who take classes on it and, and, and meditate to get mm -hmm. there. And, and, um, that's all fine and dandy, but I think the way you communicate with yourself on a daily <coughs> basis about those experiences will actually enhance the experience itself. Right. If that makes sense. Certainly. You need your dream. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and with imagination in general, if, if we're going to take it, if we're going to break it down for a second. Like, yeah, my mom taught me how to meditate at the age of five. You know, uh, I, I was mentally handicapped as a kid. So instead of putting me on medication, she taught me how to meditate. And um, I, what a I, smart mom. I, she, she's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. My mother mm -hmm. is so smart mm -hmm. and she knew, and she told me years later what my conditions were. But your mom was also a shaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, so uh, my whole family, your, your I guess. Your family has the spiritual side, and they don't ignore it. That's yeah. Uh, that is so. Uh, it's relieving to have somebody like that in your life, and you were lucky to be born into that type of family. Yeah, because you're not that. being judged, right? or you're not being. It's just. And I said this on the show with you guys a long time ago. Mm -hmm. If you remember, like when I would tell my mom about my dreams. I would say, oh, I, there's these shadow creatures and they're choking me. And sometimes I feel like they're, <laughs> they're like physically trying to like have sex with me. There was a lot of weird feelings I would get from those. And she'd say, hey, like just stare at them. And it's like, oh, okay, mom, easy for you to say. But when I was like 12 or 13 or whatever the age was, I remember I saw this like Doberman Pinscher looking thing. Its skin was falling off. It was drooling, foaming and drooling from the mouth. And my, and my mom's like words came through the Rolodex of my mind. And she was like, Hey, why don't you, uh, or like, Hey, uh, stare at it, stare at it. So I just stared at it. And the more I stared at it, I started noticing its teeth and the details of how it looked. And I became almost fascinated by, by what it was. It was no more, the, the fear kind of washed away. But the minute I said, Oh, am I creating this? The minute I said that the whole entire thing dissipated in front of me. And that's when my enthusiasm for out of body exploration started to like explode because going to bed at night as a child was super scary. It's like, oh, I gotta go through this shit again. Oh, I gotta deal with. I hate my mineral water. That's right. <laughs> Make sure you get that mineral water, my good man. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Staying hydrated is very important. I bought that just camera. for you, Jamin. Thank you. I know. I saw the case of them. <laughs> yes, I, I got thank a case you. just in case you were thirsty. <laughs> Yes, so I think when you when when there's an enthusiasm behind your mind and and, and whatever it is you focus on, we can I mean let's take it down to to uh, physical. Uh, if you're in a physical, well, we're all in physical experience right now. But if you're looking at something with much enthusiasm, whether that be bad, good, or however you perceive it, you get more of that shit. And when you're in an uh, when you're out of body, those things are happening immediately. It doesn't matter like. I can think of, oh, I'm rich, I'm rich. Oh, I can think about, oh, I'm ugly, I'm ugly. But whatever you are placing in an out of body is happening instantly. So my thought process was as a child who got picked on, got bullied, dealt with my own insecurities. My, inse my thing was, well, what if I, as I'm walking to school, I'd say like, okay, what if I just say I'm gonna have a better day today or I'm gonna do the best I can today. It's better than saying, oh, my day's gonna be shit. You know, and everyone knows what this feels like when you wake up and you're like, oh, oh yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get my cup of coffee. You get your cup of coffee and this cup of coffee to you represents something that's going to wake you up. But now you're associating 
with your mind certain things that come with the coffee. So every time you have a cup of coffee, you're also saying to yourself, I'm tired. And mm. I feel like in a physical reality, everything, the laws that are happening out of body are the same that's happening in body. The only difference is in a dense reality, things are taking more time to develop. Mm -hmm. So if you practice that shit enough every single day, then you shall see it. Now you're, you're talking about setting intentions for every activity manifestation. and manifestation. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, and that's, that's something that you deal with in your, your line of work, Rebecca, can you explain what, what you learned about um, that process and, and how it, we can use it to get over a lot of the trauma that we experience as experiencers of this phenomenon mm -hmm. and others. Um, if you're putting it in the context of what mm -hmm. Jesus said, um, so, you know, uh, I'm all a Casey student, thoughts are things, so we can create a reality. And there's other, other uh, areas of thought that believe that uh, what we bring in mind, uh, we create. And um, so I guess in the respect of what I do, uh, and, and, and by the way, I'm a big dream student. I mean, I did my culminating project in dreams. Nice. So it's been a dream group. You can do a lot of healing work. And... What I explain with, uh, with to people when I do this work, when I do regression, so to speak, everything is energy, okay? Our, our emotions, our feelings, our memories, our dreams, our, and even Carl Jung talked about them as being energy manifestations that get triggered while we're at sleep. And so there's so many different levels and uh, levels of dreams. There, we have psychic dreams. We can have... Uh, understanding what's happening in our bodies. Um, there's so many different types. They're beautiful, by the way. So I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, but in relation to what I do, um, that's what I do. I explained it um, like earlier when you know, worked with Terry, that whenever we're regress doing regression work, we're connecting with those energies. So I often talk uh, with my clients about what we're going to, you know, what we want to connect to because that helps create an energy bridge and allows them to go back into memories um, when we do regression to connect with those. So is that what you're asking yeah, me? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we talk a lot about in the show about terminology and how it's used appropriately or inappropriately. What are um, some of the, the terms? What is quantum healing? And okay, that's just the name of a process. A process. So, Doris okay. Cannon mm -hmm. created the quantum healing uh, hypnosis technique, or it's a regression, really. And she called it that because it is a process that um, really allows any type of person, whatever path they're on, whether they have been an ET experiencer or if they're just wanting to connect and understand what their past past lives, what they're still carrying forward from mm -hmm. an, another life, or it could be aspects in this life or current life. So that process is just open. I think that's why she called it quantum healing mm -hmm. because past life regression or current life regression, which I distinguish in my work, can be very healing. So I think that's just basically why it's called that, because people have uh, connected with illnesses um, and our higher selves understand why we're here having the experience. And are we learning from it? Are we ready to release that illness? Or is there something more we have to do? So those are some of the things that we can find out in that type of regression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jamin, does that sit uh, and feel good to you? The yeah. way that she words that. Yeah, I, I think I think it's really important that um, I think everyone has their own process of understanding information when it's in front of them, and whatever whatever works for you is truth. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, because we're all so different. We're all wired so differently. And I actually believe, so like in an out of body for me, uh, whatever's in front of me, whether that be an alien or like a football shaped looking head being, <laughs> uh, I was telling you about that earlier. Yeah. It's weird. It's like, you know, they all have a key to your castle. They all have information mm -hmm. that you can use in your life somehow, even if it's considered bad, mm -hmm. there's something they have. And I feel like people 
are doing, I think in, in, in all, all the people, great people I met today, like they all have a key to my castle. I have a key to your castle. Mm -hmm. And, and through that exploration or these conversations, I feel like you can you can find a lot. I think I think if you use conversation with an open mind as a focusing tool, you're fine tuning your own potency in multiple different ways that that you may or may not realize until later or not. It depends on how much you reflect. It depends on how you're using the mind. Mm -hmm. It's a very I, I, I always think it's very slippery in mm -hmm. how we take in information, you know, because if we're feeling like shit we might see things in a real weird way, even if it's giving you like a ton of gold, mm -hmm. you know, it just depends on what your state is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's interesting, you used earlier the expression slippery many times in, in the conversation yeah. with relation to, uh, well, a couple of things, and I want you to elaborate on that for a moment, but sure. it's interesting because, you know, the big takeaway seems to be that really your focus, your intention, your perception is a huge factor in terms of the experience you're going to have of living. And that probably applies to dreams too. Yeah. And really not just dreams that happen when we're sleeping, but dreams that may occur, you know, in life, you know, coming the, the fruition of dreams that we have, things that we want to achieve, goals we want to reach. So how is it that focus and intent can be controlled? Is that slippery? What exactly? Yeah, is I think it is. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's an awesome question because it, it's, it's, it, I, I think what I mean in in the context of what we're discussing here is how you think about things, no matter what, always play a role. What do they say? The mind has, and this could be like totally false information. I'm not sure. I think the mind has 80 to 90,000 thoughts a day, unconsciously and consciously. And I think what science has figured out is they, they, that makes up uh, an energy around you. But the question is, what's in those 80 to 90,000 thoughts? Of course, there's fleeting thoughts and yada, yada, yada. But going back to intent and a focus, I think that actually shapes reality a particular way for you. Now, does that mean that th this gets a little weird? And this is where I mean slippery. Oh, let's go there. Because, yeah, hell yeah, let's go there <laughs> let's and go drink there. my water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's right. Hey, we actually have we actually have the labeled oh, cups. Thing, thing number two. two. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who's thing number one? Oh, not me. Not me. Don't oh. look at me. <laughs> My depends, God. Depends on whose cup that is, I guess. Oh thing gosh. Thing number one. There you go. Well, well. Look here. Separated at birth, there, as we suspected. Mm -hmm. As we suspected. But anyway, go ahead. I love your jacket. Thank you. Yours too. As a matter of fact, have those beads around you your son of a bitch. You. <laughs> How did he do that? Nice watch. Yeah. Oh, hey, wait, hey, hey, wait. This is getting weird. <laughs> anyway. This is getting slippery. It's getting sli a little oh, yeah. slippery around here. <laughs> and you read my mind. So you know it. it uh, slip. You know, I think there's, and this is my opinion, and I'm not saying I'm right, but this is through the lens I see. <clears throat> Some people want to manifest something. We'll talk about the law of attraction, okay? I think that's all good and dandy, but I think what happens with the law of attraction sometimes is you have expectations that may or may not be met a particular way to you. And it's because we get so detailed about our how it should look that it's actually, life is actually probably giving you those things, but because you don't see it a certain way, you put yourself in a different state of mind. And when you put yourself in that different state of mind, you might lose the thing you're actually trying to get. Right. It's like playing a video game. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like life in a lot of ways is like a fucking video game. I just, I don't know how there's like bonus points and shit you can get through maybe like the way you perceive things or, or, or not allowing that, not being a slave to things that, that, that can bring you down. Although that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. You got to get frustrated a little bit. You got to throw the fucking yeah. controller mm -hmm. from time to time. Yeah. Um, because if you're not hitting those states either, you don't know shit. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think knowledge and, and wisdom is, is through the pain too, yes. just as much as our wins. In fact, I think sometimes we should be experiencing a little bit more pain in order to have more insight on how to do things better or play the game a different way. Certainly. Pain may not be a comfortable thing, but it can be a constructive thing. It yeah. can be something that is not enjoyable, but it is definitely uh, a impetus for growth. Yeah, man. Like I believe in prayer. For me, prayer works. Yeah. Uh, I, it's like, I don't know. Like, I feel like if, um, if you're having a terrible day, some people have a terrible day and like, I'm not praying today. And that's okay. 
But I believe discipline is also, so it's good to be open-minded. I think that's true. But I think it's very important to be open-minded but have discipline embedded into all that. Mm -hmm. So even when shit's not going your way, like, I think it's important to pray. Sometimes it's like, hey, God, the universe, whatever's here, like, I'm having a really bad day, but I really appreciate this life. Meditation like, does the same thing for yeah. you. Yeah, meditation is awesome. Yes. Like I, if you know, we can get lazy about certain things, right? But I, I just think if, even if it's like three minutes a day, you're taking a shit on your toilet, like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like it's okay to like. Well, just you, you were contemplating before the show. <laughs> That's pretty much what I was thinking about during the show or right before. Thanks, Kevin. Definitely <laughs> phrased, phrased in a way that we can all relate to. I yeah. think, but you know. Coming back to the slippery idea. Of it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Rebecca, I think that in your line of work, specifically helping people to achieve awareness of thoughts and experiences that maybe they, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so maybe you can phrase this better, okay. but helping them reclaim certain experiences that are stored in the mind. I mean, that too is very slippery. And mm -hmm. I can only mm -hmm. imagine that's a very difficult process, not only for many of the people who are experiencing it, but as the practitioner, perhaps for you as well, could you talk a little to that effect? The reclamation or helping, you know, your patients, if I, that may not be the correct term. Um, clients. Clients, so okay, so, a doctor. correct. So, so to help your clients reclaim that aspect of their living experience, can you talk about that process a bit? Sure, um, I think we were talking, just talking about, sometimes we experience a little bit of pain it can be um, very healing. In fact, I tell my clients when we're working with the subconscious, we're pretty much going to hit an emotion somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I even tell them you're in a you're in a safe place to release anything you need to release. And if you need to cry, go right ahead. And most of the time they do. Yeah. I have people just crying like babies sometimes, and they need. I was like, go ahead, let so, it out. Yeah, yeah, feel that, feel that. You know, and and what would that what were those words like to say? And so it can be like a catharsis. It really can. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I tell people that, you know, when you can hit a level like that, then you know something is about to release. So, so yeah, I, it used to be, you know, I've been doing this for about 10 years uh, now. I celebrated my 10th year of my business back in May, actually. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and so I've, I've um, really... Oh, gosh, really blessed to do this, and I love it. Um, I love being able to help people just relax and go into their depths of their mind and, you know, retrieve information, whether it's this life, another life. And I do the same thing with my hypnosis clients. I do a process where we connect with the parts that's causing an issue. Again, sometimes we hit some, hit some places there they don't expect because – when we're little, when we're younger, we live in the subconscious mind. That's all we mm. know. Mm. And so as we get older, the conscious mind, you know, we become responsible. We push it all down. So then it's hidden and uh, hidden in the subconscious. It's there. Uh, we just have to be able to retrieve it. Well now, said. Yeah. And there's the individual subconscious. And you already touched on Jung a bit. And, of course, with his fascination with dreams. I mean, it's a yeah. great way to tie all this together, I think. You know, that idea of the collective unconscious. Whether it's that and Jung's idea of the archetypes or it's, you know, just the personal experience and what becomes buried right here for the individual. How does one retrieve that information? Okay. Well, oftentimes what I tell people is when something is in the subconscious it's almost like the shadow aspect okay it can can create something we can't see about ourselves again when i went back and said so this is my understanding from all the different experiences i've had i've had the out of body i've had connected with with you know past loved ones entities um and so everything to me is energy there's energy around us within us and basically, I, when I talk with my clients and we try to understand what it is that the pattern they're trying to understand about themselves. So, again, I say, well, we're going to create an energy bridge where, you know, you're talking about this and it's creating that bridge. And so I just guide them to go back. Sometimes I'll say, 
imagine you've got a big ball of energy and all that you just told me, all the feelings, emotion, emotions, and when you relax, you're going to go back to that first time that occurred, perhaps. So it really depends. It may go back to a day. It may go back to the first time it occurred. Or maybe we want to do discovery work and just go back to the verse and come forward. So it just depends. Mm -hmm. But they retrieve it. And a lot of times they're, they're surprised. But it lies in the emotion. So if somebody has a pattern in a relationship over and over, um, you know, most of the time they can, um, you know, connect with that. It's there in the subconscious. It is, it is intention. Sometimes they'll come back and go, I did not expect that. Like they would have, in their mind, thought it would have been totally something different that they connect with. Mm -hmm. But then they realized, but I needed to connect with that first. You know, I need that needed to, so they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sort of funny because when I first met Rebecca, it was after I had um, reported a UFO to MUFON. And I believe it was 20. 14, 2015. Like that, yeah. It was early. Yeah, like um, before I got involved with radio, it was really just a move on connection through reporting this UFO that went under the water. So a USO. But Rebecca was uh, very sweet and, and very respectful. And uh, I was able to investigate a little bit I had had a lot of conscious experiences about visitation, so I really didn't need a lot of in-depth work with that. But what we did do was a past life regression. And in that past life regression, I finally realized I, my question was basically, why did I go to Greece? Why did I dream about it for so long? I, I dreamt about Greece and Italy and, and being there. And I knew from a very young age that I needed to go there. Of course, you know that I didn't end up moving there right after 9-11 oh, for a wow. few years and really enjoyed it. But um, there was a deeper connection and I could sort of feel it. And Rebecca was able to help me look back and I can still see the image of the house that I was raised in as this little girl named Angela. And um, and I saw myself as a child with my father and my, my grandmother. And then I I saw my my goats and my rabbits over to the left side of the little hut, and it was just a, a, a two bedroom or two room building. And seeing these things like like it's a perfect clear memory, as if it were from last year here at the house. Mm -hmm. That's how crystal clear, and I can smell the uh, orange blossoms and the trees, and I can smell the goats, and I can it smell like it. We're going on. And I was growing herbs. I had I, I had that. an herb I garden. I remember people's responses. Yes. Um, and so seeing these things made me, and then hearing my grandfather or my father call me as a child and then see my body laid out in the front area of the house, um, you know, 80 years later, or however many years it was, uh, it, it sounds like one of these bizarre stories, like, like how does it really relate? Was it a dream? Was it a fantasy? Is our brain overactive? Are we having um, breakthrough psychotic moments? There's so many things that go through your mind when you're traveling this bizarre, supernatural, paranormal highway. road highway that, that a lot of us have, have lived on. And, um, and being able to talk with someone about it and get this data, this information, <clears throat> Um, based on questions that, that the, the person, the client actually writes and anybody that is actually nervous about having a, a regression, um, you have to find a good therapist, someone who is trustworthy, who is not going to implant memories. Is that something that actually can be done or am I just um, totally making you know, that up? It could because in the subconscious, you know, anytime I always tell people that, um, commercials they're implanting things in your subconscious because you're not you're not noticing but maybe you know later you think why am i singing that song or or why do i want to go buy this product so you know that's the hidden hypnotist so um now there are yeah you, you don't want someone that's going to lead you don't want a hypnotist or a practitioner who's going to say you see that now don't you or you know so mm -hmm. it's always mm -hmm. basic questioning 
Mm-hmm. You know, what are you feeling or what happens next? Mm-hmm. What are you aware of? What do you see? It's never, ever do you decide. Somebody says, you know. So you have to be careful with that. So yeah, you want someone who it's client-centered. It's about you, but it's not about what the practitioner mm-hmm. wants to do. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, I have the framework, uh, the process I do, but they may go beyond that framework. And so it's a little challenge, but it's fun, you know, like, mm-hmm. okay, what are they going? What's happening? <laughs> so, I do. Let me let me jump in um, tonight again. Contact the compound two. Uh, celebrating um, a thing that we do, Tiffany, this podcast. You know, you and I first connected. Friendship, everything was 2016, and we we did um, we started doing shows together then. Mm-hmm. And you know, like you just said, uh, when it comes to the hope this whole paranormal and in your case uh, experiences with uh, other worldly beings it was the what it wasn't what it was why and I'm a firm believer that things happen for a reason and when we connected in 2016 till now look around this journey of your I've said this show is It's the mythology of our show is your journey. And can you get the answers that you want, need? And look who we have here tonight. Yeah. yeah, So. And I I do believe that um, people need to listen to that that inner voice um, and and believe in your senses. Uh, They're Mm. there for a reason. And uh, we ignore them more often than not. And when we do ignore these feelings, what does that do to your, to your body physically? Well, I mean, it can cause depression. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's what depression is. You're repressing things and feelings and memories and, um, you know, they can make you anxious. They can cause some things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is part of your trip to me, Tiffany, as a friend, you know, we're surrounded by more friends, but they, they're all bringing something. They brought something here mm-hmm. to our event that has, you know, their stories, you know, enlighten me on things. And as an enthusiast, I'm a, yeah, I'm a fan and mm-hmm. it's, it's great stuff. But, you know, for you, for me to you, this is an opportunity for some more clarity in your journey. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so that's the end of our second segment. We have one more coming up. Um, So join us uh, with our other guests. And we are talking big, but next up. Can can these two sign up, sign us off this segment with your little bubbly exchange? I just have one last question for Jamin. Will you help me finish this bottle of mineral water, old boy? (laughs) Certainly. Certainly. Cheers, old sport. Signing off, people. We will be back though. After I get these kids under control. Got him, buddy. (laughs) Bye, Bye. brother. You're the man.
All right, we're, we're back. The mics are unmuted, and we are back for this third segment. Indeed, right here in the very heart of Kentucky, uh, and with my very capable host, Brent. Thank you. We could not do this without a bit of Kentucky's very finest beverage. Bourbon, of course. Bourbon, indeed, not just bourbon, but in fact. We might be enjoying some weather here this evening. Yes, yeah, so we're in my native country of Germany. We would say Welle, indeed. <laughs> It is so fine and uh, almost floral in its flavor, don't you think, John? Hmm? Yeah, it's quite bland. Indeed. Indeed. So, well, you know, we have had so much Sasquatch discussion over the last couple of days. <laughs> it's been insane. I had been looking forward to meeting you for a long time, but let me tell you, it was, I knew you were knowledgeable. <laughs> Tiffany had told me, she's like, wait till you meet Brent and you see how knowledgeable he is. But let me tell you right now, man. It's seldom that I meet somebody who not only is knowledgeable about the subject and its history, but who has the field experience, which is, I think, a big separator. And I think that it's very important when we're talking about Sasquatch and the idea of cryptozoology, which I actually make some distinctions, and maybe we'll get into that. Sure. But th this topic is something that a lot of people say they know about. I think very few have experienced. What got you into wanting to do crazy things like going into the forest and actually trying to study something that is so often ridiculed. Well, I mean, it can go way, way back um, to childhood night terrors. I, you know, and maybe I need to get Rebecca to do me a regression right. because oh, yeah. I had these mm -hmm. constant nightmares and I had them, if I said I had them once a week, that was probably being not even true, it's probably more than that, at least weekly. And they occurred all the way till until I was about 21. And it was about being asleep and waking up to something grabbing my leg through the window. Mm. The next segment of the dream would be me running through the woods, falling over something like people always do in the woods when they're being chased by monsters, uh, being under a tree and just hiding in the tree and hearing something walking up. And the dream always ended with something grabbing the tree and pulling it off. So that occurred forever. My family, my dad was huge into... <coughs> Um, ETs, Bigfoots, cryptids, you know, we always watch and search of that kind of stuff. And then, you know, um, I had, to, I was flying with a gentleman who worked for Alaska Airlines. He jumps out of one of my airplanes. He was talking about, you know, being in Seattle. And I was talking to the gentleman I was flying with about when I got to Seattle, I was going to go rent me a car and go to Snoqualmie Pass and I was going to look for Bigfoot. Yeah. And this guy sitting in the back, I don't know if he would mind me using his name or not, but he he's famous for getting the Ohio howl outside of Ohio. Oh, okay. And he goes, and he he's Which from, is a specific call that's very right. of the same. And he's area. from Mississippi, and he goes, "Excuse me, son, but did you say you're going out to look for Bigfoot?" And I said, "Well, yes, I am." He goes, "Well, you know what? You're talking to the right guy because I happen to know these guys named a BFR and O." And you might want to get in touch with them if you want to do that. Hell, I'm an investigator for them folks. And I'm like, really? So we talked the whole way to Seattle about Bigfoot. It's pretty serendipitous. Yeah. And the really cool thing about it is I learned that you can actually pay money to go on a Bigfoot expedition. Mm -hmm. So the first person I actually talked to was a friend of ours, Matt Pruitt. Matt Pruitt, indeed. And yeah. he was running a expedition in Georgia. And I called to get that going, and we were also have to go to the Georgia one. And it's pretty funny because the segments of two have what my daughter used to call Bigfoots, which were Georgias. Georgias, she because them Georgias. yeah, because we were watching the show, and we're always That's talking me. about going to Georgia. And she goes, "Oh, we're watching the Georgias show." And it's like, well, no, but what something happened with childcare? We had childcare set up. Somebody got sick, and we had to cancel that. So my first actual expedition was in West Virginia. With uh, another friend of ours, Russ Ross Jones. Ross, yeah, Russ Jones. Yep. Yep, yep. So, and then we had an experience in that, which really kind of changed my life. With being asleep in a tent, something pushing down in the tent, okay. yelling at the thing, it whoo, back, sh shaking your chest, and it just took off. From you, you've mentioned the hand coming down over the tent. I didn't know you were with Russ Jones when that happened. Well, I wasn't physically with him, <laughs> right. but I was on an expedition he was leading. I right. was several miles away. I actually did. 
what was called because they everyone usually goes to a campsite together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he asked several groups of people who were stupid enough to go out in the woods by themselves. Do you I, mean like you? Yeah, and that's what I did. Desperate, yeah. desperate, desperate for Bigfoot. <laughs> again, well, I think I can relate, you know. And Russ Jones, again, a fantastic researcher with the Bigfoot Field Research Organization based out of West Virginia. Yeah. I, I spoke at length with him recently and I asked him, you know, I mean, why would you go to the trouble of, in addition to being a chiropractor and very successful, yep. you know, why would you go and become a, a graduate of your state's master naturalist yep. program? Master naturalist program. I think that's pretty amazing. It is. And and spend all this time that he has out in the, in the, in the backwoods. And he says, you know, because people contact me and say, I've had experiences. I've seen these things. I've found footprints. And there's so much, you know, put on, for instance, the, the video mm -hmm. and the footprints. But right. Something that you and I have certainly talked about over the last couple of days, almost nonstop, are the vocalizations. You right. know? We look at Dave Ellis out there with the Olympic Project, mm -hmm. you know, Julie, uh, Judy Wrench, and, uh, and so many other researchers who have, uh, you know, Monongahela, as he's known, right. um, who, who are collecting audio, processing it, analyzing it. And dare I say, within maybe the last 48 hours, we've heard some interesting things We have, here. but I don't even want to talk about it because it's not evidence because guess what? We were messing around, playing, talking. We didn't Urban. report it. We don't have it. <laughs> we but didn't. it was pretty fantastic. We've heard some things. And again, and I respect that too, that if you're going to discuss it, have the chain of custody, you know, have right. a recording, you know, have it established how you recorded it, when it was recorded, what it might have been, who was there present. So off the record, again, yeah, we may have had experiences with sounds ourselves, but the audit the auditory side of this, I think, is interesting. And many have recorded sounds that mm -hmm. they actually have, you know, recorded and have analyzed and have made comparisons. The general takeaway, and I want your opinion on this, mm -hmm. Brent, is that some audio recorded in North America that are obvious animal vocalizations do not appear to represent any known species. Is that not submissible as evidence in support of the idea of an extant creature in North America unrecognized by science? In my personal opinion, yes. But then there's others who detract from that, saying that we've never seen an animal make this sound. Therefore, yeah. you know, I think some of us take it from the point that, well, we've seen every other animal that we know of making sounds, and we've never had one, you know, reach these pitches and be able to have a 20 second long howl at 1400 hertz you know what i mean or yeah. mega, um, hertz yes so this is like you know <clears throat> we don't know of anybody who can do that you yeah. know there's no evidence of anything else being able to do that so with that lack of evidence does that actually support the evidence of what we're talking about maybe a relic dominant of some sort it's, it's hard to say yeah something that struck me about you is that you also use that expression relic hominoid uh and you know it's actually i guess been in use for decades right the idea of something that has you know lingered into modern times but which really would have existed long ago sure. so what we're really talking about is something very familiar to paleoanthropologists correct sure. something that would be recognized in the fossil record and it's funny because a lot of people when they think sasquatch they say Oh, you mean like that mythical ape man that's supposed to be walking around? Sure. I think about it differently. I want to know what you think of when people say Sasquatch. I think, well, maybe like Paranthropus, maybe even something more you know, similar to humans like Homo erectus, you know, right. certainly something like Gigantopithecus blackie, something that is known in the fossil record. What is Sasquatch to you and why do you call it a relic hominoid? Well, if, if you look at the... There's so many different routes you can go down yeah. with this particular because some people report seeing something that's more Neanderthal. It's you know the, the mm -hmm. not as much hair, right. more of um, well, what we would think of, and, and you know still big, mm -hmm. the seven to eight foot range. But then Robust, you see the, yeah. right, and then you hear the people who are talking about the nine to ten foot more ape. So, <laughs> and then and that varies by region also. Well, um, yes, that and you know and then you might have several of these different types of it's it's hard because you know so many people put so much um weight on on a visual sighting but we yeah. all perceive things so much and then our mind unable to interpret something that we're not used to seeing yeah. puts different attributes to that to mm -hmm. make it more acceptable to the person the viewer sure certainly yeah so, so <clears throat> and, you know I, unfortunately i i think i've been close proximity about four times mm -hmm. And this is through the vocalizations and the fact that whatever made that noise rattled my chest. And I've never seen anything in the woods of Kentucky or Florida or West Virginia that could do that. 
that's interesting because you, you've talked many times about and other witnesses too. We, we discussed, for instance, you know, Brent took me around and we went to several locations where was it in 2013? See, I was going back to try to figure out. Yeah. We're going to have to look at that because uh -huh. either 12 or 13, I'm not mm -hmm. sure of that now. And I don't want to give out false information, sure, but yeah. it was a, a string of three um, sightings all within this one day. Well known probably to people who have followed this topic because, again, there was actually an episode of the program Finding Bigfoot, right. which looked at this. I believe that was the title was uh, I think that one was in the rut in the rut. Yeah. yeah. And again, this describes multiple incidents that were reported almost simultaneously. Well, within hours, we'll within say, hours. you know, one was at this time um, and then two hours later, maybe two or three hours later was the final incident on that particular day. That would seem like the holy grail of Sasquatchry to have, you know, multiple witnesses all coming together and saying within a very tight geographical area, right. wow, we all saw this thing that we didn't think existed right. or that we didn't think existed at least within the last several thousand years. Mm -hmm. Correct. And when, right. when these people had the sighting, none of these people knew each other. They were miles apart. And the funniest thing was I was with Mr. Pruitt. Yeah. Um, 600 miles away. And <laughs> yeah. this string of events occurred less than a mile and a half from my house. So I was like, oh, oh my God. I drove yeah, in other words, when, when this was all happening, he and Matt Pruitt had been in my homestead of North Carolina. <laughs> that was either in North Carolina or Georgia. I don't know. I can't remember because we've been yeah. in the woods several places. We have been both. Certainly. So yeah. I can't remember if it was in Georgia. That's why the timeline. I'm trying to think. Was it 12 or 13? So All right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and yet again, having, coming, uh, having come recently out of the course with Matt Pruitt in Georgia myself, I still have the bug bites all over my legs. Good triggers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, triggers. They're not bugs. Let me tell you. Let me tell you right now. But the things we do for science. Right. Last question I have. Again, we could talk about how you apply science to this. The way I would rather phrase this is, you know, again, for people who are interested in the subject, who right. might want to go out into the field and do research. Right. As a longtime field researcher, Brent, you know, you spent you you spent years and countless hours in the field investigating, if there's advice to give somebody who wants to go into the field and do like what you do and what the Bigfoot Field Research Organization does or Matt Pruitt, you know, or any of the people that they see on television, what do you tell them? How do you do it? What's the best way to do it? And why is it important to document what you do when you're in the field? Well, because then you can you can actually start tracing evidence as far as, you know, um, and Russ Jones is awesome at yeah. this, where he would be mm -hmm. in a specific area and write down right. smells, even thoughts, you know, what he observes and everything each time and then observe, well, okay, there's, there was deer here at this point. There's no deer here, there rabbits here at this point. You know what I mean? Just, mm -hmm. just that kind of information could, could give you um, a chain of evidence saying, okay, well, there's no game here right now. So there's probably nothing there to take the game mm -hmm. at this point. Right. So any kind of observation like that is important. Another thing is always have your stupid stuff turned on. Like, why didn't I have <laughs> our audio? Why running? didn't we have our audio? <laughs> and the biggest thing is, so many people get out of their car since they slam the car door. Something in the woods gets pissed off, bangs a tree, yells, and runs off. And guess what? Did you get that? No, it's still in my backpack. <laughs> you know? so, be a little more prepared, damn it. And you know, so many people say, "Oh, you never got a picture of it. You should have. You know, you saw a Sasquatch right there." But how many people get a picture of the damn car wreck as it happens? Or the car wreck, or the the wild pigs you encounter in Correct. the woods, you right. know. And you did that, and Prout and I did that, but I actually got a picture. Oh, so yeah, I was ready. Right you got one of them pig hogs <laughs> on camera, <laughs> pig hogs. <home. laughs> Brent, look, I, last thing, I just got to thank you uh, for actually taking uh, Terry and Nikki and I out today. Of course, after he got you know back with us, he says, "Was that good?" You know, I mean, I hope that wasn't boring. And I'm like, listen, and, and I'll, I'm going to quote my dad here. Uh -huh. The very worst day in the field is better than the best day in the office. But any day out in the woods looking for Bigfoot with you is a fine day. And I want to thank you. Thank, thank you. You've been a fantastic host. Awesome. And thanks for the bourbon, by Of the course. Way. Too. weather for us. So. Oh, indeed. Yes. <laughs> Let me I had a couple questions for um, you. Uh oh, you aren't <laughs> off the hook yet? <laughs> yeah, before this segment started, Bram was like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? You've about been talking. Again. You've yeah. been talking. Bigfoots like, again. Yeah. Bigfoots. What's the difference between Bigfoot and Yeti? Hmm. Nothing. Well, it's, it's, it's a geographical name for a creature that may be very similar. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. Okay. So, Himalayas, Yeti. Um, Kentucky, Wood Booger. Um, Ohio, um, the grass. I love oh, I love yeah. Boogers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ohio, grass. Florida, skunky. So, right. I mean, it's just 
is regional. Really. Okay. My next question, shifting gears and kind of bring Tiffany back into uh, the light here as we're ending this segment. You mentioned your, your family, your dad, mm -hmm. I think specifically was into UFOs, aliens, but not so much you, right? Well, I mean, I was always interested, of course. I mean, when you're watching in search of with your dad, of course, it's, it's but cool. You've not, you weren't an experiencer. No, or I was never like experienced. Yeah. I was always interested. Right. Okay. I, I don't so. necessarily believe that he was not an experiencer. I think. Well, maybe those dreams activity. were something. I think he was having yeah. activity as a young person. Uh, you know, it's a, it's been a strange path. Um, Kevin and I have have talked, you know, over the years about different experiences and and how I feel that that. UFOs uh, are a human issue, and we are going to have to face it head on at some point. These experiences um, are very confusing and difficult to talk about, but it is worth exploring and, and becoming that open-minded person. Um, but my past was always troubled because I didn't have anybody who was supportive in that, who could believe or understand. And finding a, a group of people such as these, it's a, it's a luxury that we've been really blessed by having. Um, but also having a partner who is um, in my life, in my, my, my bed, and being able to experience some of these things um, firsthand even though you can't see these these beings, you've still had um, interactions with some of the the visitors um, in the bedroom. Yeah. Do you have one one particular story that you'd like to share, without um, embarrassing me too bad? <laughs> well, I don't know the one the guy you always keep calling sir, and I'm like, he's in my damn ass. You don't call him sir. I'm the only sir here. <laughs> or is it the guy that shined the light on me? And then three hours later, I thought, oh, my God, my arm's going to fall off. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. And the time I was going to jump out the window and say, and then you'd be like, oh, he's gone. He got taken to the portal, guys. Uh, and then he pops up around the Right, because you said there's a portal over there. I was going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> I, I, I've, I've said several times tonight that, Tiffany, part of our show is Tiffany's journey, and now you're part of it. Yeah. Whether you want to, well, I would say whether you want to be or not. Uh, that's not the right that's reason. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I backtracked. I was, I, now I, that I you would, can't take it back, it's <laughs> sealed you, and you old. You can always jump out. Right? You see that, son? You signed up. You that's signed your lease right, right there. This, this, is, this is your your death note. You're going to be with me to the end. Uh. But, but Why being, you think it's not so bad? <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty great. I mean, what uh, what kind of good. input or views or opinions have you shared with her that, I don't know, may or both of you can answer this question where Tiffany was like, oh, he gets it. He's, you know, he's in it with you. When did you first yeah. realize that I was nuts? Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a fair answer? Yeah, that's a really good answer. After, after, after signing that piece of paper. Right. <laughs> that night that you told me you nearly needed a Diet Coke, I'm like, that's strange. <laughs> so I go and get her the Diet Coke, and then she's all like, how am I supposed to drink it? And I'm like, with your mouth? And she's like, I need a straw. And I'm like, what the hell is Tupac? I'm like, this is odd. So I don't, I don't have any straw, so I'm, my daughter has some kind of a rector set kind of thing, and I built her a straw. She's like, what the hell is this? And, and then she goes, um, do you have any oxygen? And I'm like, what the hell? It's not an airplane. What do you mean do I have oxygen? Is that something you carry at your house? And I'm like, do you need to go to the hospital? And she goes, I don't think I'm going to make it. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And so the next morning she wakes up, and there's two Diet Cokes. Oh, and I forgot the bucket. She goes, do you have a bucket? And a I'm pretty like, bucket. <laughs> no, you didn't ask for the next morning. It was pretty bucket. So <laughs> she asked for a bucket. I'm like, are we going to wash the car now? What? Like, you know, bucket? So I get her a bucket. She goes, okay, thank you. And I'm like, so she, now she's happy. <laughs> Walked back around, got in the bed. And she wakes up in the morning. There's Diet Cokes laying on. She steps in a bucket. She goes, what the hell is all this? And I'm like, I was hoping you would tell me. <laughs> People, it is not always uh, fun living with an experiencer. 
Um, you have to endure a lot. And uh, sometimes you end up having little three foot tall beings watching you do the ditty in the, yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so living, living with an experiencer is probably not the thing that you should sign up with um, uh, without caution. We want prenup. We want <laughs> it was too late. The, the great, everybody's responding to that. <laughs> to which one? Too late? <laughs> uh, let's uh, wind this down because I'd I like to go sit outside and hang out with you guys. And, or, or whatever. But uh, for starters, um, to my glass here. I raise my glass to Cheers. Brent and Tiffany for the hospitality, everything about this weekend, you guys just, you over delivered, I believe. So, I mean, um, it was, it's been amazing. Um, cheers, our friends hanging out with yes, us. Yes, cheers, uh, cheers, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, kind of technical compound too, Tiff. Yeah. I guess once we end this broadcast, I want to, it makes it official, so I guess the last one makes it official. So we've had a lot of fun uh, outside of the show uh, this weekend. And uh, again, as, a, as an enthusiast, I'm fanboying over, you know, all our company here. And uh, so to amazing, Kelly. So. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us this weekend and uh, sharing the activities that we've had. And um, Micah Hanks, you have been wonderful sharing uh, the stage with you tonight. And I appreciate your friendship and all of the knowledge that you have stuck in that, that head of yours is um, something that's amazing. It's a gift hmm. or a curse. I'm not sure. Depends. Well, thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. So um, before I, uh, Maria's going to get Jameis, what I would like to do, humor me here. Get everybody in one last shot of everyone in here before we start off. Yeah, cool. absolutely. So we <laughs> also wanted to give out. Front. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have one question. One question. Um, two questions. In order to get a T-shirt and a yeah. blanket. This is, this is a part of this, the show as we're winding down here. We are giving away. Walk in here, Rebecca. So it is actually. Yes. It's the, let's, it's the let's blanket. Bring that in here. It's the, blanket. It's the same. Yeah. As the official blanket. The yeah. The official, official blanket. blanket. So we're going to give one of these away. And Brent is the one who gets to ask the question. And uh -oh. it's a Bigfoot question. Uh -oh. yeah. So, hold, yeah, hold on. He's going to ask a Bigfoot question. Bigfoot question. The one who, whoever answers it right in the chat. This is for our, our friends. Uh, no Googling. Are always, yeah, <laughs> who are always watching, hanging with us uh, on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Uh, thanks so much. You guys know what you, you mean to us. And you're a very important part of our our run here with secrets, but uh, so this one's for the blanket, uh, and then we'll do another question to give away uh, one of these. I don't know what to ask. Okay, secrets. I'll do the first question. No, I'll do. It. Okay. Yeah, All down. right. Okay. The PG film. What year? Patterson Gimlin. <laughs> oh, oh! You don't win. You've already got a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> so I ask the question one more time, Brent. The when? Pat, yeah, what year? Was the PG film Patterson Gimlin film? What year was it created? Not created. But this captured. captured yes. Yeah. This is for the blanket. Contact at the compound two blanket. Yes. No. Uh, Here's a hint. Wait a minute. 1067. No, that's no. a little. Too, a 1967. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's it. Okay. So who yeah. was that? Charles Schmars. Oh, he, Charles. Charles gets the blanket. Yeah. Okay. Number two, question number two to get a t-shirt. This is for a Universal Secrets t-shirt. Universal Secrets t-shirt. Who's asking the question? I'm going to ask the question. Oh, well, you want to no. ask the question? No? Okay. I don't know you, you get to ask okay. the question. Too. Question number two for the t-shirt is, where was Harry Lovelace abducted from? Mm. Where? What state park? Yeah. Was Terry? <laughs> 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 yeah, he's not here. Where did Terry go? 
Gary! Guys. Yeah. <laughs> they say we get to get him Did in this picture. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Where was? Ron should have done that. I know. Come on, Ron. Bobby. Yeah, Bobby knows. Bobby yeah. knows. Come on, Bobby. No one knows yet. Come I on. think I can ask the question again. Uh, what state park was Terry Lovelace abducted from? Can I give a hint? Yes. No. no. Oofy. Oofy said Earth. You got to you got to zero oh, in a little more. <laughs> Zoom in a little more. Here's a hint. Earth is not a state park. It's not to <laughs> Earthlings, perhaps to aliens. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I love Scotch. Only if it's Scotch, because that's all I drink. Oh, Terry, you, you walking in? Actually, Actually, ask the question again. Tonight. This is the we're asking our audience, our the streaming audience, uh, in order to win a Universal Secret shirt. Ask the question one more time. Once more. What state park was Terry Lovelace? Abducted from. I see a gentleman making his way to the microphone. He seems to know the answer. I think you know the answer. Wait a minute. Oh, you are That's Terry right. Lovelace. You oh, can't tell us. Well, Get out of here, Terry Lovelace. I see. There's nobody gets the No one's yet. Put him onto the set. What, what state park were you abducted in? Arkansas. Yeah. Is the state. Yeah. Northwest corner. Okay. Double D. Double D. Double D. Double yes. Den State Park. Double ah! Den. Devil's Den. Right. No one got okay. that question. My teacher's mind. I, I think, I think Terry got the t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Well, he gets a t-shirt anyway. Like, yeah. oh, did I get one? Well, should you ask uh, another question? You got a question? Okay. Next question. <laughs> one more. Not to what? Maria's here. Let's give it to you. Maria, Maria would that. you like to Come ask a question? Come up with a question get over here and ask a question. This is to give away a shirt. For the you other. have a question for me? No, no you, you come you up with a question. You have to yes. make one. Yeah, watch. Yeah. So I was gonna, like, just oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Watch it. Go. I'm not gonna touch you. Good question. Alcohol. It's based on tonight. Sweet tea. Okay. Hmm. It could be Bigfoot or anything. Or yeah, close. Bigfoot. Okay. Bigfoot? What mountain? Okay. There you go. It was on the famous movie Close Encounters. Of Wilson Towers the third time. Repeat the question. This is wonderful. Okay. The question was what mountain or famous landmark yes. was featured in the film Close Encounters? Does anyone know the name of that particular location? Here's a hint. I know the name you don't. <laughs> <laughs> No one yet. Aren't they slacking that bag oh, tonight? Slacking. What is going on? They really are. Tiffany even put on her red lipstick for you tonight. I you know. haven't gotten in I know. Yeah, she put on the red Sweet. lipstick, and I wasn't even on the show. Brent was even on the show. said, both of them. Oh, said Satan's crumbly towel? <laughs> no. Oh, Someone, Genghis <laughs> mashed potatoes. <laughs> close. You know what? I think he's, he's close. That he's close. You know what? Because he did make a he did make yeah. He's you know close, what? yeah. That, that, that answer is going to work for us. <laughs> Genghis. Genghis. <laughs> the answer is, though. What is Devil's the Tower. Devil's Tower. Oh, did I? So oh, hold on, hold on, on. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh -oh. American Road Warrior did get it. American Road oh, Warrior. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I must Devil's say, Tower. American Road Warrior, you were correct when you said Devil's Tower outside of Hewlett, Wyoming. Okay. A possible volcanic intrusion, some speculate, might be a giant tree stump, albeit petrified. Yes, the massive one that's like a few miles wide. But we all know it's really a UFO landing pad. Yes. Yeah. I like that idea, too. Signing off. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> good night, Los Angeles, and good luck. San Diego. Tiffany, uh, yeah. Was it San Diego? What town am I in? Yeah, Damn San it. San Diego is. What do you mean we're in Kentucky? We are. Nobody we told are. me I was in Kentucky. You're supposed to tell me I was in Kentucky. Get in you here, everyone. Uh, Everybody get in get here. Get in for a little group shot. All right. All right. All right. Let's not go too far back, Brent, for the record, if we optioned off your shirt, Brent, what would the starting bid have to be? $7,000. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>
There's a gift from my beautiful wife. Well, hello. <laughs> Greetings. I know this man. Wait a second. What are you doing here? This Corn is it. Uh, look at it, it here. Everybody. Okay. Jamin, Terry, Micah, Brent, Sierra, Maria, Hello. Rebecca. It is. Contact at the compound two guys. Complete. It's complete. Tiffany and I are taking a break Tuesday night, so no show Tuesday night. We'll be back on the 19th, October 19th. So, guys, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Um, again, Brent, Tiffany, yes. everything amazing. Thank you. Thank you so Peace much. Out. Glad y'all are here. Peace yeah. out. Cheers.